What's up everyone? This is my counter entrepreneur coming back with some more entrepreneurial content. If you are new to my channel and you're thinking about starting, managing, or growing your business or your site also, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can do that by hitting that subscribe button, also banging on that notification bell so that you are notified whenever I drop some entrepreneurial content. Today we are going to be talking about the gig economy. And we're going to do that right after the intro. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a I'm an entrepreneur. Hey, 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 what? Hello everyone, this is Michael. Uh, welcome to today's podcast. Today we are going to be talking about the gig economy. Uh, this is a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Uh, I just wanted to see through my research how I personally felt about it. So I, I knew that my tone and my bias towards whatever this is would not come across in the content uh, or the video like this video that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Okay, so I don't think the gig economy is necessarily a bad thing, but I do think that uh, some people can take advantage of what the gig economy um, offers people and workers, right? So let's just dig right into it. So what is the gig economy? The gig economy is basically uh, people that work uh, for a certain business or they work for a corporation. They work for it for just a, a particular period of time or for a particular project. So they're not on payroll. Uh, they don't have to, or the employer or the business doesn't have to pay, you know, uh, employment taxes or anything like that, uh, medical, any of that. They literally just pay the person for the task. And you can see right off top of why a business would want to do that. Obviously, it's cheaper. It's cheaper to pay someone, you know, $300 for, you know, to complete a video rather than, you know, put someone, a videographer, a full-time videographer on the payroll. It's more expensive over time. And then you also have to like make sure that, you know, the amount of money that you're paying them is amount of is, is appropriate to the amount of work that you're giving them. Now let's talk a little bit about who benefits or, or, or what types of people are in the gig economy. Uh, most people that are in the gig economy are freelancers, people that don't want to work, you know, for a business. They necessarily don't want to start their own business. They just want to be able to pick up gigs here and there when they need extra money. So gig actually comes from, you know, being on the road, you know, you, you go, you get a gig and then you move on, you know, you do that gig and then you move on to the next gig. So, okay. So who is in the gig economy? There's typically two people. Obviously there's going to be uh, a business and then there's going to be a freelancer or a person that is agreeing to uh, a contract that, like I said, necessarily does not obligate them as an employee, but it just obligates them as a 1099 and a 1099 is, is an independent contractor. One of the things when it comes to the gig economy is the internet um, has made it extremely easily accessible, not only to you know businesses that want to hire gig workers, but also for gig workers themselves. So that is an upside. It's just e more easily accessible because you can get to it through an app or you can get to it through you know a website. Most of the times it's apps. And it's easy for people not only to be hired, but to hire someone uh, of a higher caliber uh, to go in and that's qualified to do a job. So now let's talk about the why. The why like why would anyone want to actually you know be in the gig economy and so I'm gonna break it down into the two people that it impacts and essentially it's the business owner or the entity that is trying to hire a gig worker and then there's a gig worker themselves so let's start with the uh, person or the business that is trying to hire the talent uh, so through my research I didn't find a lot of cons that were out there if you guys after me going over my list of pros if you guys actually have ideas on what you believe are cons uh, please drop them down in the comments below always email me um, your suggestions or whatnot uh, you can also uh, DM me directly on my Instagram that'd be totally great um, I would love to hear your guys' feedback but let's get into it uh, when it comes to the employers or someone that's seeking a gig worker uh, for the most part it's beneficial for them because they save on costs in so many different ways number one they save on costs just actually in you know having to pay for benefits and things like that uh, for that person the next thing is for indirect and I will be doing a video on uh, my uh, income statement and I apologize I know that I said I was gonna be doing it it's my last uh, addition to my my one of the series that I'm trying to complete uh, but essentially I do talk a lot about indirect costs so indirect costs is anything that is not directly affected by you know the, the cost of goods or you selling a product is something that stays the same and it's fixed so that's anything that's like interest that you're paying on debt or you know office space 
things like that, insurance on your business, uh, so many different things, but those are those are indirect costs. So it, it's not like your cost of goods. So it's not like you're paying for, you know, more materials or anything like that. Um, these are just things that you have to pay each month. Doesn't matter how much you sell. Uh, but essentially, uh, you're saving on that too, because if you, you know, you have five openings for a job position, but then you no longer, you just, you know, hire those out to gig workers. Now you don't have to worry about housing those employees and putting them, you know, in a space that's air conditioned and, you know, regulated for workers and has a break room and all those different things. You don't have to worry about that. So that's a big thing for them too. And then the last thing when it comes to uh, some of the pros for uh, the person that is hiring a gig worker is you save cost on training. Um, and to me, that is huge because a lot of businesses out there, you know, they spend a lot of their revenue to train their employees to get better and better and better or to train them in new diff uh, like new ways of the industry that they're working in or whatnot or new machinery, things like that. And I forgot one thing, one more thing, but the other big benefit for, you know, uh, someone that is trying to hire talent uh, through the gig economy is they can get the best quality or the best talent sometimes for a lower price because the competition is so steep. You know, they don't have to, you know, look at just one person and expect for that one person to meet those needs. Uh, in the gig economy, you literally type in what you want. Like if you're on Upwork or Fiverr, you type in what you want and you can have up to 30 to 40 people that are bidding on that job. So that's the big thing about, it's just a competition. That's the huge thing when it comes to, or huge benefit when it comes to hiring work through the gig economy. Now let's talk a little bit about um, the gig worker. And this one, in my opinion, has the pros and cons. First, let's get into the pros. The best thing, the best thing for a gig worker is the flexibility in their schedule. And I think that's the main reason why people uh, like to work in the gig economy. Uh, I don't know numbers, but I do feel like there's a huge percentage of people that work in the gig economy uh, outside of their nine to five. So they do a gig economy or they, they work a job in the gig economy because they want to make extra money here and there. So, and this is my thing. And I know this is, I'm probably going to rub people the wrong way, but actually I don't care. The biggest thing for me in the gig economy, there's jobs out there that are meant to be gig jobs. Don't try to make a gig job your main job. If you want benefits, if you want, you know, uh, 401ks and things like that, you want the perks of being an actual employee, go to a job and get in, try to get hired at a job that affords you with those things. Don't try to turn Lyft into your everyday job. Don't try to turn Uber into your everyday job. You know, there's other businesses out there and granted, you may not want to do that, but that's the reason why I feel like as a entrepreneur, you need to know these things because there are people out there that are going to try to change those things and change your perspective but at the end of the day like it frustrates me when i hear people you know asking the like gig businesses uh for benefits and things like that it's like no like you that's the thing about like working for a job you don't have to work for the job you literally can quit and go somewhere else you know if you, if you want other things go somewhere else uh, but don't try to turn a gig job into a full-time job you know it's meant to be a gig lift is meant to be you know, yes, there are people out there that figured it out and say, hey, but if I do it every day, I make more money. Or if I do it at these specific times, I make more money. I understand that. But like I said again, and I'm going to say it again, don't try to turn a gig job into a full time job. Really know what you're getting into. But at the end of the day, back to what I was saying, I do think that flexibility is probably one of the biggest benefits uh, to someone that is in the gig economy. I know for me, when I before I started ECG Graphics and Printing, I was in a gig economy. Uh, I was just picking up jobs here and there. I actually was, you know, doing work for other print shops. You know, I didn't want to be the person to go in and purchase all the equipment and make the shirt. I didn't want to do any of that. I just wanted to go in and design the shirts and send them off. You know, I wanted someone to be able to email me, say, hey, I need these postcards or whatever. I need this design. And I would go in, create the design, send it off, make my money and move on to the next gig. But I understood, like, as I started to develop, I changed uh, I didn't want to, you know, be a freelancer anymore, but essentially I knew what I was getting into and I liked the flexibility with that because I was doing so many other things and I didn't want to have to worry about the business and all the other stuff. I just wanted to be able to make, make money as I went. The other thing, and, uh, 
this kind of feeds off of the first thing that I said, but just the flexibility and schedule. And then the second thing is just being able to take jobs that you want to do. If you work for a, a business, right? Uh, and there are some businesses out there and I know some of you guys are like, no, that's not true. Uh, Cause I do know if like with Uber and stuff like that, you kind of have to take certain gigs like that when you actually open up your app. I get it. But like I said, it's a choice. You don't have to, you can go to a different provider. The good thing about being in the gig economy, you can take what you want. You can sign up for different platforms. And uh, I'll start by saying that there are certain platforms that do require for you to actually take uh, certain gigs, um, which I get, you know, they want to make sure that the, the, the customers are actually able to be served. So that's a whole nother situation. But anyways, uh, the biggest thing is you're able to actually go in and you can say, I want to take this job. Or I want to take this job. I want to drive as a technically as a freelancer in the gig economy, or I want to do art in a, you know, so you're basically signing up for what type of work you want to do in a freelance setting. So that's a good thing about it too. You're setting up, you know, what you want and you get to take what you want with, with gigs. Now, there are quite a few cons when it comes to uh, working as a gig worker. And it's a trade-off. Like I said, it shouldn't you shouldn't be turning a gig job into like a full-time job, right? Uh, but essentially, number one, uh, you have modest pay. You're not gonna, now there might be some gigs out there, like let's say if you're a copywriter and certain things like that, like obviously those are bigger ticket skills. So, and if you guys want to know more about that, um, I love to watch Dan Locke. Dan Locke is an amazing speaker. He's an amazing uh, entrepreneur and he talks a lot about that. Like uh, if, you, if you do want to, you know, not start a business, you should, if you're trying to be competitive and make as much money as you can, if you want to be an hourly worker, you want to make sure that the skills that you have are high ticket skills, right? So that's a whole nother video that I can go into, but um, saying that to say this, but for the most part, because of the, the saturation and how many people um, that can be in the gig economy trying to do the exact same thing that you're doing, sometimes that can make make you suffer on how much money you can make because ultimately people want to pay less for more, including businesses. They want to get more services done for, uh, they want to get more ser better services, more services done for less. And that's just the way it is. Uh, so sometimes that, that that pay rate that you would want, that premium pay rate, you won't necessarily get. The other thing is, and I talked about it, it's a pro for the uh, business that's looking for a gig worker, but it's a con for uh, the actual gig worker, and that is uh, benefits. Uh, little to no benefits when it comes to um, gig workers. So you don't get you know, sick pay. You don't work, you're, you're not getting any money. That's just as simple as it is uh, because you're working a gig job. So you're not an employee. So that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, there's the other thing too, and I think we all need to educate ourselves. And I, and I believe on my YouTube channel and, and on this podcast, I'm gonna do my best to bring in uh, people that know more about the tax code and the tax laws to actually educate us and bring us in on just some know-hows. I'm not expecting for us to know everything about taxation, but I think you know we should know enough. We all pay into this system. So I think us being able to educate ourselves, especially as entrepreneurs, uh, it's important for us to educate ourselves so we know how taxation happens uh, so we can make better decisions throughout the year. But essentially, uh, being a gig worker, you're responsible for your own taxes. And that comes with a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Uh, you have to be very diligent on your income and, and uh, getting into that, knowing where the money's coming from and how much you made in a year, uh, stashing money. Like it's it's a headache for gig workers that literally just do gigs their, the whole year. Um, so it takes a lot of bookkeeping, takes a very dedicated CPA, honestly, and well-paid CPA at that. So tax complications are a huge thing when it comes to that. Last but not least, I do want to talk about it. This is another uh, pro on the business side, the person that's trying to hire a gig worker and a con on the actual gig worker themselves. They have to pay for all of their equipment. Uh, so if I'm a freelancer and I'm in the gig economy, like let's say on Fiverr and Upwork as a photographer, there's no business that's going to supply me with the camera or spec out laptop uh, to actually be able to get my work done. I'm gonna have to acquire all those assets myself, assure them myself, um, take care of them myself so that I'm able to do that. So that is probably a big thing too. Like let's just say Lyft workers, Lyft's not going to give you a car. No, you have to go out if you want to get better jobs, uh, higher paying jobs, 
possibly you have to have a more luxurious car. So uh, people are going out and they're leasing cars that are a little bit more expensive so that they can then get better paying jobs. Uh, so that is one thing that comes into the gig economy. It's a lot. The biggest thing for me is um, there's a lot of controversy out there when it comes to the gig economy and how it takes advantage of gig workers. Like I said earlier, I think that a gig worker needs to have a certain level of understanding. Uh, gigs are gigs and full-time jobs are part-time jobs are part-time jobs. So now it's not okay for an employer to treat a part-time employee as if they are a gig worker. I'm not saying that that's okay, but as a gig worker, you should not try to be treated as a part-time employee when you, if you are not in fact a part-time employee. So I think it just needs to be an understanding on both sides. Um, in my opinion, uh, that's why I love contracts because at the end of the day, like a good man forgets what he says, but contracts remind them. Uh, so I think it's really important uh, when you're thinking about those things, enter in contracts that you fully understand, uh, enter into agreements that you fully understand and go from there. So just protect yourself, make sure you know. So now what I wanna do is I do wanna tie this back to just how this can impact you as an entrepreneur. And the first thing that I want you to think about is if you are a business right now, and let's say you've been affected by the shutdowns or by you know having you know 20% capacity, uh, we know within everything that's happening, or you had to let staff go, uh, and the PPP grant didn't really satisfy you know your budgetary or payroll needs, things like that. Like obviously you're thinking about okay, how can I downsize if I were to go back? to my restaurant or to you know my print shop or whatever, how can I plan for something or how can I be aware and make a plan for the things that could possibly happen in the future? And, and to be honest with you, a lot of businesses are more lean and they are finding ways uh, to save money. And saving money means having less people on payroll but still being able to get out the things that they need. Now, just because they don't have people on payroll doesn't mean that that money's not going to someone else. It may be a smaller percentage, but it's still going somewhere, right? So uh, if I encourage you, if you have a business, find a way to actually make this gig economy work for you. So let's say you are an uh, inspiring entrepreneur and you're thinking about what business you can start in this upcoming year. My advice for you would be uh, really think about the type of business that you want to start and make sure it solves a problem, but it can also be executed on that gig economy basis. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have not, please hit that subscribe button. Also bang on that notification bell. If you guys have any questions or you have any feedback or you, you know you want to add something to this conversation, once again, this is a conversation, please drop them down in the comments below. I am going to be answering every single comment or question that you guys have is really important to me. Uh, please make sure you head over to my website at michaeltheentrepreneur.com. Uh, you can check out all of the different resources that I have, uh, my YouTube channel, uh, the podcast, everything that I have. You also can check out my other businesses. I actually do offer you know, startup services. If you're looking to get a postcard, logo, uh, t-shirts, anything for your startup business or your small business, you can definitely order and put a quote in on my website. Once again, that's michaeltheentrepreneur.com. On the screen, there is a video that is talking about the top five different businesses that you can start in 2021. I highly suggest you check out that video.